We're very blessed tonight to have from Vilnius, Archbishop Grusius. I first met the Archbishop when uh, I went to the Philippines for a Congress on Divine Mercy over there. And I was very impressed with uh, his humility, his trust in God, and his love of the Divine Mercy. And through a great friend of mine, Henry, when I'd said I'd met the Archbishop, he said, uh, I said I was having the Congress, I said, do you think you could ask him to come out here? It'd be a great blessing for Australia. He said he knew him because he worked with, the, with um, his grace when his grace was younger and uh, with the youth over here in Australia. So we're very blessed to have him here today. I've been to Vilnius myself. It is an absolutely magnificent country. The image of divine mercy that we see here today that was given by his grace for the Congress. And I'm so very delighted that he sent it over for us. So his grace will bless the image first and then he will proceed with his talk. So could you please welcome his grace, Archbishop Gershus from Vilnius, Lithuania. As John said, let us first bless the image in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, you have allowed pictures and statues of your saints to be painted and carved so that as often as we look upon them with our bodily eyes, we may recall with our more inward eyes their deeds and their sanctity and learn to imitate them. In your goodness, therefore, bless and sanctify this picture fashioned to reveal to us the unfathomable love of our crucified and risen Savior, divine mercy personified, and to recall to our minds the streams of blood and water gushing forth from his pierced heart to be a font of mercy for us. Grant to all who invoke your mercy with this picture before their eyes, the grace of true repentance, pardon, and peace. Shield them from every danger to soul and body. Loving Savior, establish in this picture the throne of your mercy. Pour out upon all who approach it with faith and trust the purifying, healing, and sanctifying rays of grace ever emanating from it as from a blazing sun. Gaze upon them from it as you did from the cross with irresistible love and compassion. Through this image, may your divine mercy triumph over all the powers and wiles of Satan the world over. May all who venerate it never perish. May it be their joy in life, their hope in death, and their glory in eternity. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Your Eminence, Your Excellency, Brother Priest, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as John described, the image that we have before us is a copy of the image, the original image of divine mercy, except for one minor detail that John has altered since I have sent it to him. <laughs> the original image does not have the words, Jesus, I trust in you, painted on it. Sister Faustina and her spiritual director, following the instructions of Jesus, had it put on the frame under the image. But most of the images that we see have, Jesus, I trust in you, written on it. And in one sense, that is good because that's a very important reminder. Jesus, I trust in you, is a principal lesson that we have to learn if we are going to find and be able to receive divine mercy. What does it mean? It means, Jesus, I believe that everything 
is in your hands. That is a biblical message. In the Old Testament, we have the prophet Jeremiah giving the words of God. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, oracle of the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your woe, so as to give you a future of hope. When you call on me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. In the New Testament, the same message was transmitted. In the words of the Apostle Paul, in Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work for good for those who love God. And through the diary, Jesus reiterates the same message. The graces of my mercy are drawn by means of one vessel only, and that is trust. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. Souls that trust boundlessly are a great comfort to me because I pour all the treasures of my graces upon them. To be able to believe that our past and our present and our future are all in the hands of God is the way to mercy. We have all experienced it. We must all go back and count our blessings so that we can trust looking forward. If I look back on my own life, the lessons of mercy and God's plan began way before my birth. He had a plan to teach me mercy and the mercy that comes out of difficulty, of atrocities. He had a plan to help me to believe that there is a plan, that God has a plan for each of us. My lessons began when my parents were in Lithuania during the war. My mother and my father got separated Eventually, my father got picked up by the Germans and then escaped. He ended up in the displaced persons camps, the refugee camps in Germany. My mother and my infant sister remained behind in Lithuania. As many during the war, they lost contact. For 12 years, they had no sign if anybody was alive in the family. After the war, the Iron Curtain fell down and my father could not go back to Lithuania, nor my sister and my mother leave. After 12 years, through friends of friends of friends, they got word that everybody had survived. My father had made it to the United States. My mother and my sister remained in Lithuania which at that time was already occupied and part of the Soviet Union. When, in 1959, Vice President Nixon visited Khrushchev, part of that visit included a goodwill gesture that Khrushchev would allow 200 separated families that were separated by the war to come together. And it was not the kind of coming together that we saw earlier this week in North Korea, where families were allowed to come together for three days. My mother and my sister were given visas to leave the Soviet Union. They came to the United States in 1960. My, mother, my sister had never seen her father. She was an infant, and by that time she was almost 18 years old. They reunited in 1960, and I was born in 1961. <laughs> Do the math.
my life proceeded. My mother tongue was actually Lithuanian, despite the heavy American accent. My uh, mother did not speak English when I was born, and I did not speak English until I went to kindergarten and got socialized. My life, and if I start going into the whole story, John's going to pull me off in about <laughs> 20 minutes and a half an hour. Um, but I did not know about Sister Faustina, St. Faustina, Divine Mercy Devotion, until I left my work already in my mid-twenties and entered the seminary. I had already worked professionally for five years after a university degree. And I entered my pre-theology program at the University of Steubenville in the United States for a year of philosophy before I was supposed to continue my theology in Rome. And I arrived and everybody there was praying the divine chaplet. Our first retreat was a retreat uh, about divine mercy. I had no idea that this was going to be more in my life in the future, but God put his signs, signpost in the road. I only later found out that over the time of their separation, my mother had carried a tiny little picture that had been made of divine mercy, as many people did in Lithuania and throughout many parts of the world after the war, hidden in her clothing through all that time. So divine mercy had led the family towards reconciliation. God would have other ways of getting me, getting signposts of divine mercy in the road. My first job as a deacon in the church was to plan the papal visit of John Paul II to Lithuania. In organizing it, the little things that I had not realized but come to a deeper understanding over time was that a part of that visit was the first time that Pope John Paul II actually saw the original image of divine mercy. The man who, as a bishop of Krakow, started the process of canonization for St. Faustina, and as the pope finished it in Rome, had arrived in Vilnius and prayed before the restored original image. And God had me have a hand in that. The next sighting of divine mercy was God's sense of humor coming out loud and clear. I was a student in Rome doing my doctorate, and I was there on the day that St. Faustina was canonized. Being a student in Rome and finding my way around, I managed to get some really good tickets for the canonization. If you can imagine St. Peter's Square, and it's called the Sacrata, which is the upper level where the altar is, and there is a group of people to the right and a group of people to the left. I got tickets on the group on the right. And it was in April of 2000. If you've ever been to a papal ceremony, a canonization ceremony, you have to get there much earlier before it starts, and you're sitting in the hot sun. And you're there for about three to four hours with the ceremony and the preparations. And after I got back to the college where I was studying, where I was living, I found that I'd been in the sun too long. And because the sun was coming from this side, this side of my face was red, and this side of my face was white. just as sitting too long before the divine mercy image. <laughs> but it was that day that the Holy Father 
in his message of Regina Celli, name the cities connected to divine mercy. He said, today as I name the cities whose patron is the new saint, I entrust their residents with a particular task to carry out the apostolic mission of divine mercy. The cities were Plotsk, Warsaw, Vilnius, and Krakow. Being a priest from Vilnius, this obviously got my attention. Warsaw, where she started her religious life, Plotsk, where she had the vision, the first vision of the merciful Jesus, Vilnius, where the image was originally painted, where it was first exposed to public veneration, where the chaplet of divine mercy was dictated, where the instructions were given for the hour of mercy, where the request for Divine Mercy Sunday was given, where she was asked to found a new congregation, where Blessed Sapochko developed the theology and teaching on Divine Mercy, and Krakow, where she continued to witness and teach and where she died and is buried. This continued to be a signpost, and as I became, when I went back to Lithuania in 2005, Cardinal Bachkis established a new church, the Shrine of Divine Mercy. And it was upon establishing that church that some controversy arose. People didn't want it moved from where it was before to the new church. And the day that it was moved, there, was, there were people outside the door of the, in the streets trying to block and protest. And I got a call from the Curia. I was then the general secretary of the bishops' conference, but I think it was more because of my size that they called me. And they said, could you accompany the auxiliary bishop of Vilnius over to the new Divine Mercy Shrine where he will say the first mass before the original image of Divine Mercy that has just been brought there. So, not out of my doing, I end up concelebrating the first mass in the Divine Mercy Shrine with the original image. The Cardinal found out after he had decided to move the picture there that it was also a church where Blessed Sapochko had been rector during his time in Vilnius. In 2010, I was consecrated a bishop for the military ordinariate. It was only after I took possession of the principal church of the military ordinariate that I found out that it was the church that Blessed Sapochko rebuilt as the military chaplain. And it was now my see as the military bishop. In 2013, I become the Archbishop, I'm named the Archbishop of Vilnius, and Pope John Paul II's words ring loudly as part of my mission. I sometimes think it's what I've heard called two by four spirituality. If you don't get it the first time, God takes a two by four and keeps pounding you over the head until you understand. <laughs> How many signs do you need? We've put out a movie on the original image of Divine Mercy, and I will be talking about how that divine providence showed just as clearly and loudly in the lives of St. Faustina and blessed Mikhail Sapochko. It's God's plan. And no matter what difficulties we face, we know that he has prepared the way and we need to live it out to respond. We've brought copies of the movie 
in the back. It is an amazing history of how the image was painted, hidden, stolen, returned, and how it ended up back in Vilnius after 50 years of not being able to be publicly venerated. That's why the image here in the center is more known. The image in Krakow, Hila's image, was the one that was able to be visited and prayed at. But the original one is back in Vilnius, where most of the drama of the image of divine mercy and the story of the revelation of divine mercy took place. But this is not about me. It is about each and every one of us. Each and every one of us are receivers and instruments of divine mercy. This weekend we will see, as I said, how it unfolded in the lives of St. Faustina and Blessed Michael, but it is extremely important to review our own lives. We have had these signals and signs in each of our lives. The way has God worked with us individually, the way that God has worked with us in our families, the way that God has revealed his mercy and his divine plan to us. Our lives are about us, but not just about us. They are about God's plan for us individually and collectively. Let us remember that expressing our trust in the Lord is expressing that we believe and we do trust in God's never-ending mercy and his guidance. Let us end by three times repeating those words that Jesus calls us to deepen our faith and trust in divine providence. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you.